Welcome to DWBI Adda channel. Please subscribe for latest training videos. Hello everyone and welcome back to another video of machine learning with scikit-learn. We in today's video we'll be looking at one of the very popular and very productive up to the mark algorithm used in machine learning that is support vector machines. Now in support vector machines we will be looking at what are support vector machines and how we can understand and implement the same. So let's get started. So this is our Jupyter notebook ready and since we can see the definition of support vector machines from Wikipedia we can see that the support vector machines uses the two major concepts that is the marginal error and the one that we have is the hyperplaning. As we have seen in the previous videos of the usage of support vector regressor, in this we'll be looking at the overview of what is actually support vector machines. So in support vector machines, we need to look into two major concepts of maximum margin and optimal hyperplane. Now hyperplane is a method of reducing the dimension of a data to convert it into one lesser dimension and then classifying the same. Now for an example, if uh, the data of n dimension is present, hyperplane when it applied to it becomes to n minus one and provides us much more resources and values as compared to one lesser reduced dimension. That would be if I have a 3D dimension or three dimensional space of data, if I reduce one dimension, that is hyperplaning resulting to two dimensional of data. Now what support vector machines does is it gives us the optimal hyperplane for the same. Followed by that, we have the maximum margin that includes the maximum value through which one specific instance can still be considered as a part of their classification. Once the support vector machines draw the optimal hyperplane, we have the classification of two or more categories and we get the results for the same. So this was the overview of support vector machines. Let's get started with the example that we have. Now importing the necessary libraries and we have a special data set that is the social networks ad which has been taken from online super data science community and we can see the data using data frame head representing the first five values by default and it simply means that we have to predict on a specific feature that whether on the basis of a user ID is given a gender and age and estimated salary whether a person will make a transaction or not. So that's the data which is provided and let's look into it how do we need to handle with the same. Now in this one what we are doing is as you need to understand in classification that not every feature is very important. So what you have to do is you have to select the necessary data or the features most of the times and then use it for the same for the prediction. If you add the useless data or the features which are none of the use in prediction that just increases the noise and reduces the accuracy of the model. In this one, will be using as gender, age and estimated salary as a value of X, predicting the value of purchase of buying or not for the same. Zero represents that the value, the purchase is not been happening and one represents the purchase did happen. Once that is done, let's split our data into the four subparts using the test train split used in model selection. Now, test train splits allows you to distribute your data into two major categories of test and training in which training uses the model to 
learn how to change itself according to the values followed by the the testing phase in which the user or the developer test how much accurately the model has learned in this one the test size that we have defined is for 20 percent and the random state we are keeping is 42 now random state and test size has been defined in the previous videos i refer you to look into the same for that once that is done we need to scale the data which is a very important part of tree processing once that is done we call the specific classification now as you can see in the following videos we did support vector regressor in which we call svr that is support vector regressor from the class of svm but in this one we are calling support vector classifier once that is been done we need to call the specific kernel which is available for different purposes and different kernels which are used according to different data set which is being provided so by default the kernel is rbf and the random states we have taken is zero first let's try to handle how much how much our prediction score is with rbf and then we'll be trying to change the kernel once our support vector classifier is been called now we need to and being trained we need to now predict the value which is given so we have predicted the values that is y print and we have y test values also so these are our predicted values and these are the original values that we have to understand how much accurately our results have been obtained we'll be looking into confusion matrix and let's slow the same now as we can see 47 are being classified as correctly which was correct that is true positive and 27 are classified as wrong which were wrong so as we can see the diagonal major diagonal error array that we have is the classification of how much correct our model has predicted and the inverse diagonal shows us how much wrong values the model has predicted so that is the confusion matrix once we see the accuracy score we will be able to understand much more better so in this one we can see 0.92 that means that the accuracy is being obtained to 92 percent which is a very good score now let's try to change the kernel type and let's see what results we obtain from that so pressing shift plus tab to get the documentation followed by using a linear kernel this time tailoring the model and the predicted values as we can see we saw a little bit of change and let's see if it was for good or bad as we can see the value have changed from bigger value now here in 9 as it was comparatively less the other time and more this time so let's see how much accuracy we got now as we can see the accuracy is being reduced to 86 percent and since our bf was much more better value for the kernel we'll be using the same rbf so it represents that we have only one in now and nine in the previous linear one which gives us a better result with rbf default kernel as compared to the linear one so that was support vector machines one of the very popular algorithm used and hope to see you in the next class now